Hey everybody, this is Brother Paxton coming to you from Rockbridge County, Virginia. I just want to talk to you for a few moments from the book of 1 Kings, chapter 19, verses 11 through 13. It seems like in our world today that many people seem to be uncomfortable with silence, especially if they are alone. Um, but it's the silent times in our lives that we are often most able to hear the still small voice of the Lord our God. Certainly the prophet Elijah, he understood this principle. Uh, after receiving a death threat from Queen Jezebel, he escaped to an isolated desert area. And it was there in a cave he heard the Lord say to him, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. And after the fire, but the Lord was not in that fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. So it was when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of his cave. Suddenly a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And that was 1 Kings 19, uh, verses 11 through 13. Quietness is essential to listening. Have you ever tried to listen with a whole bunch of commotion going on around about you? Have you ever tried to listen when someone else was talking to you and you were trying to listen to the person over here? Have you ever tried to listen in the midst of a crowded room where everybody's talking at the same time? See, those are the type of distractions that illustrate to us what the prophet Elijah went through. He isolated himself only so long as to receive a word from God. Quietness is essential to listening. If we're too busy to sit in silence in God's presence, if we're preoccupied with thoughts and concerns about our day, if we have filled our minds hour after hour with carnal interference and aimless chatter, then we're gonna have difficulty truly listening to the still, small voice of God. And one thing that I'm concerned about in this generation in the church is that we have got to have a word from God. Like almost at no other time in our history in the American church, we stand at the precipice of losing the religious freedoms that our country was founded on. We've got to hear a word from God. We have got to get God's mind and his heart on the situations and the issues that we face in our lives. And so we have to learn how to hear his voice. You see, it's not too hard to hear the television. It's not too hard to hear the video game. It's not too hard to hear the cell phone. It's not too hard to fritter away countless hours doing things that will make no difference in all of eternity. But we have got to get back to sitting in his presence in silence until we hear his voice. And then, of course, we must obey what he speaks to us in the silence. As his voice is the only thing that we hear ringing out across the morning stillness. A clarion call that will bend our hearts toward heaven and will give us the information, the holy information, the revelation that we need to, to live in this world and keep the faith of Jesus Christ in the midst of a generation that seems bent on destroying it. Set time aside to wait upon the Lord in silence. You might find that it be late night or early morning. You might find that's your most time of solitude and quiet. At noonday, a walk in the park might suffice. It might be a time when you can quiet your soul before the Lord and hear him as he speaks to you. Ask the Lord to reveal to you the time and the place where you can turn off the cares of this world and the worries of your life for a few moments and listen to him. So often we spend all of our prayer time talking to the Lord, and that's good. But we need to spend time waiting in silence to see what the Lord might have to say to us. Take time to in, in, intentionally sit before him or kneel in silence before the Lord. Empty your mind of all other thoughts, concentrating on his word, concentrating on his presence with you, and ask him to speak to you. 
don't be afraid to ask. God wants to reveal himself to you as much or more than you want it revealed. So just ask him, Lord, speak to me. As I sit here, a lot of times when I pray, my Bible is open beside me and I sit. And God, as I'm, as I'm sitting here and reading through the word and just sitting here in the silence, speak to me. Tell me what I must do in my life for the things that I'm concerned about. And God will answer that prayer. And when we collectively begin to do that, we'll see heaven move once again, giving us the words to pray. See, there's that time when, when we talk to the Lord. How much better to speak to him words that he has given us rather than just simply words of desperation or words that we have purposed beforehand to speak. If we got it right from his heart and prayed that to him, I believe God would answer, and I believe God will answer in a powerful and in a mighty way. So from Rockbridge County, Virginia, this is our last full day here in October of 2018. This is Evangelist Len Paxton encouraging you to take time, to make time, to get alone with God and hear his voice saying, go with God, and he will go with you. Bless you.